Welcome to Celebrity Liar. My name is Andrew Hill Newman, and I've written a poem. No, you have yes, not. Yes, I have. I have. <clears throat> if I had a drink, I'd be toasting. Of her talents, I'm constantly boasting. She's witty and smart, so pretty, it's art. I'm lucky that she is co-hosting. Louise Rowe. Aww, Andy, you are so kind. Aww. I'm a little bit sad because it's my last show for a little while, but I'll be back. I will be back. Yes, but for great successful reasons. Yes, exciting. Yes, Louise is going off to do a show on the CW called Plain Jane. Check it out. It's going to be great. It is. Nice plug. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, but let's get back to this show where we play the greatest game on the internet, and it is a very simple game. Two celebrities are going to tell you the same story as if it happened to them. In truth, it only happened to one of them. It's going to be up to you, the audience, to decide who's, who's the, the liar. liar. And we want you to get involved, peeps. So get online, theroomlive.com, and email me questions because we want to catch them out to figure out who is the liar. And then at the end of each story, you can vote on who you think, and I'll pass on those Yes, things, Louise will announce questions. the vote and pass your questions on to our celebrity guests. Exactly. You talk to me, I'll talk to you. Speaking of celebrity guests, the very funniest show on the very funny TBS network came out of the brain, life, and soul of the very talented and very funny Betsy Thomas. The name of that show is My Boys. We are very fortunate because we have two of those titular My Boys here <laughs> with us this evening. There Please make word. with the welcoming sounds for Jamie Kaler and Reed Scott. Yeah. Hello, titular, my boys. <laughs> Love that word. Okay. It's fantastic. Yeah. Isn't it? I just really want to titular say Tuesday. It. Mm. Yeah. Titular Tuesday. Uh, and you know, uh, they do not want to be chosen as the liar. I just want to stress this as the point of the game. They want to be believed. So it's kind of like Survivor. You don't want to win the vote. That will eventually happen. <laughs> uh, Reed and Jamie shared some stories before we went on. They are represented here within the bowl of stories. We are going to reach deep within, choose one at random, and that will be the first story told. But you know what? Why should I reach in? when we have a third titular my boy in our star-studded audience, no Michael Bunin, ladies way. and gentlemen. Mike Bunin no showed way. up! Hey, yeah. look who it is! Yeah. Hey, Gentlemen. buddy. Thank you. Thanks, man. No, I hear you're wow. the grand champion no, of the show. Be quiet. I'm wow. to do something. Mm. So you're kind of like my boys. I, I am. We are. Yeah, this is fun. Mm. Oh, wow. So this is what Jordan feels like. This is cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, I okay. think so, right? Uh, please, uh, <laughs> do reach deep within, pick one out, give it to me, and get out of here. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> they have chosen at random before we started to see who goes first, and Reed is going to be going first. We have two minutes on the clock. Reed, please tell us a story that we call Oedipus Schmedipus. Oh, man. Well, uh, let's see, it was, I think it was after my freshman year of college, I was 19 years old, and some buddies of mine, we, we just, we had enough. We wanted to get out of here. We were, went to school at Syracuse. It was cold, so we wanted some heat. And two of my buddies were from Miami. Um, so we went down to Miami for the summertime, and I'd never really been before. And they're, they're brothers. They both come from a, you know, very, you know, affluent family. So their dad, we spent the summer, like, you know, racing cigarette boats and doing this crazy stuff. It was so out of my element, but it was awesome. And we had a great apartment to stay in that was in the family. These guys are from Miami. They love the humidity. I can't stand it, which is why I live in L.A., it's so hot. It's, it's, it's awful in the middle of summer in Miami. I'm sorry. Beautiful city, but I don't really like the weather. So I sort of took two, because I was young and experimental. I took to sleeping in the nude for the summer, because it was hot. And they didn't want to use the AC, because they're used to it. And I'm dying. So this one morning, I had my own room. It wasn't that weird. I'm lying in my room. And I'm like, sort of like half wrapped in a sheet. And my buddy's pounding on the door. And he's, like, he's like, dude, you know, get up. We're going to breakfast. We've you know, we got to get some to eat. I'm like, yeah, 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 just give me five minutes. I'm not a morning person. So right then and there, the phone rings. And I'm sticking to the sheets, you know, naked. Phone rings, it's my mom. My mom's long-winded, you know, she's just gabbing away, gabbing away. How are you, what's going on? So I'm talking to my mom for a bit. My buddy comes banging back in the door and just walks right in. He's like, dude, what are you doing? We gotta go. What do you, what do you do? He sees me naked. I got my one hand sort of like under the sheets, one hand on the phone. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, dude, you knock, man. I'm talking to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> the look on his face. I was like, wait, that just, and he, he just, he just slowly like, closes the door. <laughs> wow. Uh, Thank you. Uh, well Thank you. told. I'm with uh, 14 seconds to spare. Uh, so your mom, uh, nah, I'll save that. Uh, 
uh, very interesting and plausible, as told. Yeah. But I understand something similar may have happened to you, Jamie. He has destroyed my story. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. Uh, it was in San Diego, and uh, I wasn't because it was hot. I, it was warm, but I was in that phase where you go commando. You just start sleeping nude because you realize you can. As a little boy, you have whitey tighties. Then you go, hey, I can wear boxer shorts. And then somewhere in mid-20s, someone says the word commando, and you go, I don't have to wear underwear. <laughs> and so you don't. And so you're sleeping nude. And at the time, I was really hungover. It was Sunday morning, and uh, my girlfriend had called, and she was coming over. It was not a dude, but he didn't want to tell the girl part of the story because it was too embarrassing. It was my girlfriend at the time, and so I was really hungover, uh, and Sunday morning, she calls. She's like, hey, I'm coming over for brunch. I'm like, all right, just let yourself in. So she's on her way over. It's, I just have a sheet on me. I'm totally naked. The phone rings. I think it's her again. And I'm like, hey, what? And, she, and all of a sudden, it's my mom. And so I'm talking to my mom. She's like, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. And so she's talking to me forever and ever, and it's blazing hot. And, you know how it is when you're laying? There's a reason guys' arms are this length. I wasn't itchy. <laughs> I wasn't doing anything. If you're watching television, like, look, if my hand goes on my lap, it just slides there. It just, it's like rollerball, and that's where your arm goes. And it's so I was on the phone, and I was like this, just totally holding myself and talking to my mom. And sure enough, two seconds later, my door opens in my bedroom, and my girlfriend walks in. She's like, hey, we going to... What is happening? And I'm like, no, I'm not. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't doing that. And she's like, who, who are you talking to? And I'm like, it's my mom. And she was like, that's it. That relationship was pretty much over really quickly after that. Uh, that was going to be my question when I heard it was a girl. Uh, I wondered if it could outlast. It the, did not uh, last long, and that brunch was very uncomfortable. I will tell you that. So it's like rollerball. I guess. I mean, look, your arms are a certain length, and they just, Jonathan, Jonathan, and then boom, there they go. And that's where they land. It's almost like a way of saying they're still there. That's it. It, it is. Like, like when you check for your keys. You're like, it's no, like keys, wallet, mm, hello. Package, it's all Buster right. Brown. <laughs> Uh, Reed, I wondered, uh, you were on boats with these affluent guys from Florida. Was this, were they, you sleeping on a boat? When no, this no, no, no. We the, the apartment was, was on land. It was in Miami Beach, but they grew up doing that. So it was, you know, like a nice little mini vacation to go off and, and do all this weird kind of fun stuff. Hmm. Uh, go ahead and vote if you already know who the liar is. To be quite honest with you, I have an inkling, but I still have some determining to do. Uh, and if you have any questions to make your decision clearer, please pass them on through the chat room to Louise, and she will pass them on to Reed and Jamie. Louise, any questions? <laughs> yes, of course. Um, from Boston, Tracy wants to know, both of you, did your mums know that you were talking to them in the nude? Absolutely. Well, I'm sure my mom assumed. Right. My mom did not know. I'm Irish Catholic. She probably thought I was wearing, like, a, still a onesie. She didn't know. <laughs> and how did she react after the screaming and the door slamming? No, it was, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Click! Yeah. And I go. All right, and Reed, hmm. did you get a lot of um, shit from your mates? Uh, yeah, mostly not so much about the touching myself and, and being naked and hot and sticky part, because, um, you know, guys do that, but <laughs> on the phone with mom, yeah, yeah. you know, your, your buddy's, it's something you don't want to know about your buddy. Right, naked, yeah. okay, cool. Um, what was your buddy's name? Zach and Nick. Zach okay. and Nick okay. And, and what name? was your girlfriend's name? Annie Owens. And if she's watching this... <laughs> I'm so sorry! I wasn't! I swear! I wasn't! It was just my... And where did you go and eat brunch? We're getting specific questions now. Cast Street Bar and Grill. Ooh, right on Cast Street, answer. right off Garnet in San Diego. Pretty fast. Okay. I would always... It's a good brunch place. Uh, I've decided who I think the liar is. Uh, why don't you go ahead and vote? And if you haven't, uh, we'll, we'll give it one more question. But uh, I'm going to show it to the guys so they know. I think this is who is lying. That's who I think is lying this time. I, but I think I know who's lying. Well, I'm, I'm sure you both do, and we'll find out. That's the way uh, <laughs> uh, Mike Bunin, do you know who's lying? I feel like I do, yes. Mike Bunin thinks he knows who's lying. He feels it. Another one of the boys. Uh, Louise, are there any other questions no, from the chat room? But, but I love it when this... Oh, oh, I'd be giving feedback through my non-existent talk back. <laughs> <laughs> that. Oh my God, how's this crazy? It was a landslide victory at one point, which I love when that happens because it's very embarrassing for one of you. Oh, but, but it's, it's apparently changed to seventy-five percent. Yes, yes, roll. please. Who is it? Seventy-five percent of you guys think that the liar is. Jamie! Ooh, uh, we disagree. I thought Reed was the liar this time, but um, 
I actually fell off my game last time when it was only I one out of two. Uh, so that means that, Reed, you're going to win this round, but right. whether you get one or two points will depend on who the actual liar was. Uh, will the real liar please dramatically raise their hand? Sorry, everybody. Ooh, <laughs> how about that? Right. Two points. He's on the board for He's first. He's going to kill me because he, I am too specific. Wow. Uh, yeah. Just be more generic. Absolutely. I was my really affluent friends from Miami. <laughs> really? <laughs> you, are you people even watching this right show? Or what are you watching? That should be your first I was tip. down cigarette boat racing with my affluent <laughs> friends from Miami. <laughs> really? Really? No, no, no. You guys are right. I'm the insane person. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Well, that was your first tip right there. Is I, I have no friends. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it right out so when you said friends. I was right like, out of the shoe. I was like, no. <laughs> you know, Reed and Jamie are not just playing for honor or boasting rights on the My Boy set. They are also playing for a shot at $64 million in tonight's Mega Millions drawing. And being celebrities and generous celebrities that they are, I'm sure that they are each and both going to donate a generous yet undisclosed portion of their possible winnings to some uh, worthy charity. Uh, why don't we find out who you're playing for? Reed? We, we have to give it away? Yes, please. Uh, well, in that case, Just we, who we were going to split it, you know, <laughs> yes, and go to Miami and race it. Oh, we are <laughs> splitting it. Don't worry about it. Uh, no, I'm playing for uh, the ASPCA. A very, very worthy organization. How about you, Jamie? <laughs> the Lone Star Paralysis Foundation. Also good. Working on spinal cord. I, I hope injuries. that you both win a lot of money and Absolutely. donate a lot of money. Uh, but it's time to move on to round two, which means it's time to get Michael Bunin back out here to re Enough. reach deep within oh. the bowl of stories. Michael We're Bunin, please. Too much Bunin. Uh, Pick one that I can get right this time, because I was wrong last time. All right, thank you. Michael Bunin, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Come on. By the way, Michael Bunin is undefeated at this game. He plays it extremely well. And whoever wins here is going to be invited back for a challenge match. Uh, okay, Jamie, you're going first this time, and the story that we would like to hear is called Mother, Jugs, and Speed. Wow. Which one was Mother, Jugs, and Speed? <laughs> well, I think there was some sort of comic Red allusion wine, to either Mother, mother Jugs, jugs oh, and Speed. Oh, that's right. Mother, Jugs, and Speed. I was at uh, a concert, uh, and I went to see uh, the Psychedelic Furs. Wrong story. Is that the, what's the right story? Skating. Which one? Oh, that's right. Let's get a fresh two minute on the clock. Genius. Uh, I think it's only fair to point it's out not. that we've all been drinking for hours. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to help you, buddy. No, no, this isn't my story. I'm totally making this one up. Uh, Mother Judge is me. Oh, the double reverse. Maybe. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, the right. Obviously, the one I knew well didn't go over well, so let's see how this one plays out. <laughs> she named him. I'm like, oh, Mother Jugs of Speed. I'm at a concert. Well, skating, of course. <laughs> no, Go ahead. Yeah. I'm roller skating. Yeah. Uh, this is my first fight. And uh, I'm not proud of it, but I, uh, I was at a roller skating rink. It was like freshman year of high school. And uh, if you obviously know roller skating, you know I'm the age for roller skating. So it's ridiculous to even go on with this story. <laughs> but uh, I'm roller skating and... Um, I get into a fight because this dude starts calling me out. For some reason, uh, people hate redheads and they want to beat them up. We're like the bullseye of a target. People are aiming at us. And so this guy, Tommy, was all uh, spread word through the rink. It was like, Kaler, Kaler, I'm going to kill Kaler. For some reason, I don't know what happened, why, but he wanted to kick my ass. So it's you on. You don't know why. That's you know why. I, was I know why. <laughs> I may have said a smart ass comment. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've had a problem keeping my mouth shut for a very long time. And honestly, I've learned to edit recently, so you can imagine me then. I mean, I got kicked out of a high school class to go to the special ed class for a week because I couldn't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I thought he'd come get me in 10 minutes. He left me there for a week. <laughs> anyway, this dude Tommy was going to kick my ass. And so uh, it was my first fight. I'm an athlete. I could fight, but I'm, I'm, I get terrified. I'm not ready. I'm not the first guy to swing. I'm not good at swinging first. And usually the guy who swings first wins, so I'm not a good fighter, I would say. Um, so he, the, we had to go to the men's room, and he was going to kick my ass, but we're on roller skates. It's like a hockey fight. And so he, I'm just backed up against the wall because I'm so scared I'm going to get clobbered, and he is skating at me, trying to come towards <laughs> me to fight, but he's on skates. So he's it's ridiculous. The skates are going up and back and down. And so he 
comes flying at me. I really just step out of the way timidly, boom, right in. He had his head down and went right into the urinal and knocked himself out. And I basically <laughs> was the grand champion for years. I basically became Fonzie of mine. <laughs> Until the nice. next fight. Now I got my ass up. Wow, well, once we knew what story it was, you did a very once, good once job. Once the story came out, yeah. That was good. That was Still good. honestly wondering uh, what it has to do with Mother Jugs and Speed, but... Uh. See? <laughs> Mother Jugs and Speed is a it's little... It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Uh, we're going to get drank. a fresh two minute on the clock, and then we're going to hear Reed's version of this exact same story. Okay. Um, well, you were very close. It was my first fight, and there was roller skating involved. I was, uh, it was in sixth grade, and I'd been to one other roller skating party before that, and I actually won the only raffle I've ever won at the first roller skating party. And I won, I still have it, I had a, a, a Shaka Khan, like, <laughs> 45 record at home, which I'm very proud of. Anyway, so this, at this roller skating party, a year or so after that one, Tommy B, I'm not gonna call him out on the air, uh, hated me all year long. We're at this roller skating party and you know, finally I just, I had enough, I'm like fine, we're gonna do this, but you know, we're in sixth grade, sixth grade, we can't just go like circle the cars like Karate Kid style or anything like that, like that out in the parking lot. So we go to the one place where we have some privacy, the men's room, we go there, people are packing the men's room, guys and girls were all in there, you know, fight, fight, fight. And yeah, we're like, we're slipping and sliding around on, on roller skates and I have myself like, cornered because I'm not a fighter and I'm, I know I'm gonna get my ass kicked. So I'm backed up against like the wall of urinals and Tommy, this little shaved head, just put his head down and came ch bull charging right at me and I just sort of stepped out of the way and his head goes right into the, like, the, the lip of the urinal, knocks himself out, I win by default. So the first fight I'm in, I automatically win. I was a hero for like two weeks and then everyone forgot. Uh, fantastic. Come on. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'm surprised that in neither version did Tommy uh, end up with the urinal cake in his mouth. Just well, that would have been too, too yeah, far. I, 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 I would have said that, but they would have thought I was lying. Oh, yeah. the extra detail that gilds the lily. Uh, I have some questions. I'm sure you have questions. If you do, go ahead and pass them on uh, to our celebrity guests through Louise. Uh, or if you already know who the liar is, go ahead and vote. Uh, they don't want your vote. They don't want to win this vote. They want you to believe them. Uh, I have a question for you, Reed. Sure. This had an audience, this fight. Mm -hmm. Guys and girls in the men's room. Guys and girls. Didn't they see that it was kind of an unforced error? Uh, that he knocked himself out on the urinal? They sort of did, but it's, it's sixth grade, you know, you get away with those. You know, if you're the last one On a technicality or whatever, yeah. Totally. Okay. And uh, how about you, your face off in the men's room, this was a solo thing, or Just there were us. other people there? They weren't, they were not in the room. <laughs> Two men entered the restaurant. Two men entered. One man leaves. One man gets entered. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and we, then everybody <laughs> leaves. <laughs> uh, Reed said he was in sixth grade. Uh, I don't remember how old you Freshman were. Freshman year of high school. Wow. I know. Uh, I know. Sixth we started grade. slow oh, in New Hampshire. Sixth what is grade's it? pretty young, isn't it? Really young. Yeah. Not yeah. anymore. Nine. 11, 12. Uh, really little. Okay. Yeah, little. Right. We don't do grades. No, you have forms, don't Just, you? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Sure. Uh, it's long, it's long Louise, ago. are there any questions yeah, from the audience? Yeah, everybody wants to know what was the smart-ass remark that you made to make Oh, I'm just, I always had the, anytime somebody had a wrong answer in class, I was the guy who had the, hey, bleh, I'm funny, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> so I think he, he had a wrong answer and I kind of, I was like, bleh, 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 something, I honestly don't remember. Oh, so this was a leftover it. insult from the school it, day. It wasn't something you hurled at him at the school. It had been building, no, it had been building most of the semester. Like I couldn't keep my mouth shut in class. So I, Anytime anybody, I was the smartest guy and I would pick on people and in like a, man, that guy's an idiot. And this guy was like, I am going to crush your head. Right. And that was. He crushed his own. And I also, I think people hate reddits. I truly <laughs> feel there is You're a prejudice towards red. gingers. No, that's true. I mean, seriously. Strawberry blonde, I So it's say. not just the redhead stepchild, it's all of them. <laughs> no, people, yeah, when I, yeah, when I was in the Navy, the chief used to say, red on the head like a dick on a dog, which I still don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you, it's not good. It's not good. It when somebody says it. that to you, it doesn't, it doesn't make you feel good. No, I understand having grown up uh, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Why would that guy? I'm lying. Sure. I love that. Uh, yes, red on the head like, uh, yeah. Uh, Luis, are there any, uh, any other questions from That's the chat room? Go ahead and vote if you know. I'm still torn. There's more, there's more, there's more. Celeb Poker Forever, who is like faithfully always writes in every week. Thanks, Celeb Poker Forever. Um, what was the name of the skating rink to both of you? Oh, Starburst Roller Skating Rink. <laughs> you had a name. Goffstown Skating Rink of New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't of New Hampshire. Goffstown Skating Rink. Okay. Next to Hooks. And why did Tommy hate you? Um, Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate him. 
Uh, I don't know. Tommy sort of ganged up with me. There's a, a kid who lived down the street from me, Matt, and we grew up as friends. Then we sort of like we got into skateboarding a little bit. There was like weird sort of competitive, just you know, bullshit skateboarding competition sort of stuff. And I wasn't very good at it, and they were sort of better at me. But I tried to skate, and I was never really good. So it was kind of a hanger on in the skate community. And he just didn't like me for just sort of always being around. Just that. Yeah, that's it. Not the most exciting. No, he's mean. We'll, we'll, we'll roll with that. Okay. And the last question, which I kind of want to know, did you use your stoppers? You know those kind of Starlight Express oh, stoppers. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, tiptoes. No, I wouldn't know how to use them. I was just luckily I was against the wall. I think I was holding on to the paper dispenser or something, but I don't. I wasn't using stoppers. It sounds like Tommy could have used his stoppers. He should have used his stoppers. Uh, <laughs> I've decided who I think is lying this time. I think this person is lying, but uh, so far I'm not. Uh, Great. Oh, I was right, actually. You were wrong uh, first time. So maybe I will be undefeated. Louise, do we have a result of the yeah, vote? Yeah, interesting. Remember, really? they don't want to sure. win this really vote. really watching and listening, guys? Um, ready? <laughs> yes, please. 67% of you. Not too, yeah. Well. Close one. Think yeah, that the liar is yeah. Reed. Ooh, Ooh, again, we disagree. Yeah. I was right last time. Am I right this time? Will the real liar please dramatically raise your hand? <laughs> oh, I gotta get it in frame. Ah. Really, after the beginning of the, I honestly just couldn't remember what the stories were. <laughs> <laughs> the double reverse worked. Uh, not only am I thrilled uh, that I was right both times, even though you guys were wrong, I'm also thrilled that we have a tie game, which means yeah. it all comes down to the lightning round. Uh, the are they, lightning round. Are they even watching the second story? They just watch the first person talk. Yeah. That's the person they think is telling the truth. Each yeah. Ah, he did it. He did it. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, it it's actually statistically uh, varies quite greatly as to who gets the vote, who goes first or second. Though many, including Mike Bunin, said he likes going first. Enough of the Bunin. Sorry. <laughs> we don't need any more Bunin. I, I got enough of it. <laughs> yeah, All Bunin. right, the lightning round works like this. Uh, before the game, both Jamie and Reed were kind enough to email me some facts and fake facts about themselves. I have chosen some at random and placed them onto these cards. Uh, we're going to begin with Jamie reading to Reed five things about himself. Reed, it's going to be up to you, like lightning, to answer Ooh. true or lie. All right. Uh, All I will right. keep a tally, and then we will uh, find out uh, how right you were in the end. You ready, buddy? Anytime. No, no, no. Focus. Okay. okay. <sighs> Number one, I once ate and shat out a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> not true. No. <laughs> really? That seems. I'm, oh, I'm not supposed to tip it. Oh, yet. Now you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. That's what. I really have no idea how this game works. Wow. That wow. seems so you. I know. Really. That's why I wrote it. I had a girlfriend do online traffic school course for me. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, online. Lightning, like lightning. Yeah, like lightning. False. <laughs> All right. I took banjo lessons in grammar school. <laughs> False. I worked for two weeks as a background actor in the Hotel New Hampshire. True. <laughs> I have an hourglass shaped birthmark on my left buttock. <laughs> False. Uh, I knew you! Wow, he said it so fast as I if he's really familiar with that. I know left, that for a fact. Uh, buttock. Uh, all right, well, uh, we will look at the score after we <laughs> do the other lightning round. Please read, <laughs> read these, okay. and like lightning. Unlike read, but yeah, yeah, like yeah. lightning. Okay, let me, let me focus in <laughs> on read. True or lie? lightning's more like... Yeah. yeah. Lightning. No. Sorry. All right, here we go. Ready? Go. I'm missing half a toe on my left foot. False. I played the Tin Man in The Wiz. False. I got my eyebrow pierced just to impress a girl. False. I like to give people incorrect directions whenever possible. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's not, it is in my head. Go ahead. Uh, my first concert was a Grateful Dead show. It's true. All right. Let us recap. Uh, he said he's missing half a toe on his left foot. You said it's false. It is indeed false. So, Jamie, uh, you get a point for that. Uh, he has played the Tin Man in The Wiz. I did. No, yeah, I bet he was really Poorly. good. No, no uh, so you get no point on that one. Uh, he also did get his eyebrow pierced. I want to see an actual girl. flyer for that whiz before I believe. <laughs> how about a number? I know Maybe how Reed <laughs> works, please. Uh, he did get his eyebrow pierced to impress a girl. I did. I Do you still that. have a... Uh, I, it, the little, yeah, the little sort of scar tissue is there. Wow. Uh, 
He said that he likes to give people incorrect directions whenever possible. Uh, you said that was true. That is false. He's too nice a guy to do that. Uh, he false. said his first concert was a Grateful Dead show. You said it was true. It is indeed true. So you got two points in that round. Let's see. You've got to get two to tie or three to win. I don't feel good about any of that. Uh, <laughs> you said it was... Uh, you said it was true that he ate and shat out a quarter, yeah. but no, he actually made that up. I could have sworn. It was a dime. Uh, uh, he said he had a girl do online traffic uh, school for him, and you said that was false? No, it is That's true. true really? And I think a felony. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, it wasn't her. You said it was false that he took banjo lessons in grammar school, but indeed he did. Oh, okay. man. Uh, maybe you could favor us with a tune another time. Uh, he said he worked for two weeks as a background actor in Hotel New Hampshire. You said that was true. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wanted no. it to be true. I did too. <laughs> Uh, and he said that uh, he has an hourglass-shaped birthmark on his left buttock. You said it's false. It is indeed false. But you know what? You only got one right. He got two right. That means that our winner is... No! Oh. Dude, that was close. It was a very close game. One point separated our players. Uh, and sick. for coming in second, you get one chance All at right. sixty-four million dollars. Watch you, that one sir, hit. Knowing Reed, that one hits. Five the one. chances <laughs> at sixty-four million dollars, which means you have five times as many chances. It, as it doesn't does. matter. It's Reed. Uh, and you know what? Both of those tickets have just as much a chance of winning sixty-four million dollars as they do turning into sixty-four million dollars yes. if you rub them fast enough. Which gets back to our first story uh, about the. No, not really. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I want to thank Louise Rowan. I want to Yay. wish her well on her new show called Plain Jane. Plain Jane, please look for it, watch on it, support CW Louise. Nice. A month. Yeah. Yay. 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 We want it to be a big success, so much so that she can control her schedule enough to come back and <laughs> yes. play with us a cool lot. But uh, please follow her on the Twitter at Louise Rowe. Watch her new show on the CW Plain Jane. And let's one more time please give it up for Louise Rowe. Wow. Yay! Yay. 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 That was great. Uh, I also want to thank my guests, Reed Scott and Jamie Kaler, and our surprise guest, thank Mike Buhner, and I worked with hey. him one more time. Uh, from My Boys, check out My Boys on TBS. It is really hysterical. I know they say very funny, but that's what they're talking about. Very July funny. 25th, new season. Yep. Yeah, uh, and Stop I it. want to thank Robin Ruzan and Michael Davis and Matt Edwards and everybody here <laughs> in the roomlive.com that makes this a possibility, but we couldn't have a show without you. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Good night. Mm -hmm. Wow! <laughs>